Alright, lads and lasses, I'm Inksonish Creator, and I'm here on Porta 4, continuing on the King of the Mountain series. Last time, we saw this, the Porsche 911 Turbo. And, you know, it did pretty well for the four-wheel drive cars. So, we are moving on to a new car. Uh, and I thought, you know, I was browsing around seeing what cars, and I have decided that the next car to go up for Jimmy Kaido is this the Gallardo Superleggera now I know what you're thinking it already starts in R3 class how the hell is this actually going to be able to take part when merely I can only bring S class cars there is one rule that I have said is in the series that is going to come into effect here I can't swap the drivetrain unless necessary the drivetrain drops 50 PI so, that is exactly what I am doing. Making this the first drivetrain swapped car. Now, normally, if I was playing this on Forza 7, I normally would do this. Uh, but I'm curious to see how it's going to affect cars, well, this, in FM4. Uh, yes, I'm absolutely going to want them. I'm going to want nice 315s at the back. Um, gearbox, I'm not going to worry as of... Yeah, actually no, I won't put on a driveline. Diff can go on. Uh, suspension, yes. ARBs. And brakes, sure. Uh, don't want to put in a gearbox, I'm not too sure. What tyres are we talking about? So probably two, three, fives at the front. Okay, might be a little bit of an issue, but the front is no longer dealing with any power so it might actually you know do it might actually help with the understeer uh however you know the ah i can't put on a weight reduction okay uh power can i put on any parts i can put on a manifold uh i can put on a stage of exhaust i think i'm gonna want a manifold uh ooh, i don't think i'm gonna really get any more power. If I do that, knock this one down, and then, ah, crap. Um, oh, there we go. 586 horsepower. It's a little bit lighter uh, with the valves and the pistons, but they don't really, what, that's two pounds and that's a pound. So that's three pounds, whereas this is taken off. Actually, that's taken off a lot more. Uh, what's that? 232. Ooh, okay. So, we've got 570... Like, 586. Or... I can have... Uh, 11 less horsepower, but the car weighs about... What's that? In the teens, kilograms lighter? And to be honest, I'll be able to take off a little bit more weight with things like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for this, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to go for... Do I go for a gearbox, or... Do I try and sneak on a... Nah, it's not really worth it for the driveline. But, uh, yeah. This is the first drivetrain swap, and the Gallardo built. Fuck off, what engine was it? Ah, the SV Merchelago engine. Alright, okay. So, Gallardo's built. 575 horsepower. Uh, 32, a little bit under 3,200 pounds. I'm curious, really, to see how this will do. Because I do really love the Gallardo, much prefer over the Huracan. So, I'm curious to see what a drivetrain will do, yes I have, to a, uh, to a four-wheel drive car. Let's find out. Okay, here we are, at the foot, at the base of Fujimi Kaido, going to take... Three runs to get it to the top of the uh, new hill climb. The current leader is that TVR Tuscan S with a 437.267. It's going to be interesting to see what this can do. I'm hoping that's going to be better than the 440s. I'm hoping I can get this into down down into the uh, 430s area. I reckon it will. You know, it's not the most powerful. It is. It has had a fair bit of weight taken out. 
Uh, so I'm curious to see what it will do, and plus as well, I cannot remember how rear-wheel drive car, how four-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive actually acts in this game. So let's find out. First couple of corners is actually driving really nicely. The gears are pretty long in this, though that might not be too bad. Like I said, like um, this car is naturally aspirated, so you know that might actually not work out too bad the longer gears what is the acceleration like actually get a big amount of air time over the uh, s section there that is uh, good to note the acceleration is there it does have pretty good acceleration through there the uh, car is actually driving really nicely the Gallardo is planted it's uh, not actually understeering that much despite you know two three fives at the front it the uh, the rear tires as well being nice and wide is definitely helping allowing me to just put the power down and yeah the car is just planted through the corners this is a absolutely fantastic to drive my favorite this is definitely my favorite rear wheel drive car at the moment uh, compared to everything else I am Ooh, okay that might have been a little bit of a mistake to put it down into the uh, put it down into first but this is definitely the best driving car that we've had go up uh, for rear-wheel drive cars especially it is absolutely incredible All right come on get it round there we go actually very nicely through there for the uh, four hairpins taking decent amount of speed and again I am just pretty confident with the power of course I'm not I'm not gonna be as confident as if I was something four-wheel drive but it still retains that little bit of rear end grip with the wide tires that is actually a lot of speed through the uh, water chicane there through the river chicane sorry that was a lot of speed uh, flat out might be pushing it but it might do it 50% hairpin now yep the front end is just getting tucked in oh a little bit of oversteer there a little bit of dodging a little bit of dodginess heading out of that corner. However, still not too bad. Heading into the uh, second tunnel now. My god, I absolutely love the glorious V10 Lamborghini. Especially this one. Come on. Scared it through here. There we go. And stamp on the power. Yeah, this is just absolutely planted. And I love it. Ooh tiny bit of oversight there actually going over the small bumps heading into the uh, waterfall car park let's get through this uh, double left hander just keep off the power get it jump back onto the power and there we are the rear end is just allowing all this power to be sort of dumped down and dealing it with great ease actually uh, the front end as well it's just turning in nicely into these corners it's got the uh, little bit of understeer that you'd expect to see uh, however you know it's still manageable and it's just absolutely fantastic up here getting on to now the part where the course opens it's can I'm curious to see what speed this will be able to do up the uh, long straight so let's find out now Oh, again, a little bit of oversteer, but it's still very controllable. Into third gear. Yeah, the gears are pretty long. Um, it's probably a little bit down on power, but 134 miles an hour still isn't bad. No, no car, from what I remember, has managed to break the 140 mile an hour barrier. You know, all the cars see... They're getting pretty close in the 134s, 137s. Uh, but no real 140 mile an hour as of yet come on we're just a couple more corners to go oh I probably want to uh, shift it out of second gear there put it in the first round the final corner and what we're doing we are doing a 439.7 so we have broken that 4, th that four minute 40 barrier so it is going to be in second place and it is actually pretty close to that all 37 the question is that run felt 
pretty damn quick. So I might, well, pretty damn flawless. So, well, I say flawless. I was quite tentative with the car. Now that I know what it's like, I can start to push it a little bit more. Um, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting. It might, actually. I don't know if it... I don't think it'll beat the TVR. I think the TVR's just got too much acceleration uh, for the Lamborghini. Oh, that is a lot of understeer into Turn 1. That, that was my bad there. Oh, a little bit of a dodgy Turn 2 as well. So, what I can do is just push this car a little bit more. That was actually very good uh, little chicane there, though. I think the awkwardness a little bit is actually the threshold between gear one, between the first gear and the second gear. Because even though it's normally aspirated, I think the gears being a bit long is actually hampering it ever so slightly because it feels like it's bogging down. Ooh, I turned in way too early there. Through that uh, just small left-hander there, that's going to cost me a lot of time. That's probably the uh, run over, if I'm honest. That, that is probably it. I don't think this one is going to be any quicker. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if I can get, if I can claw those, uh, if I can claw those tents back that are lost from clipping that wall by just being a little bit braver with the power and uh, probably better gear selection as well. Right, heading up towards the uh, four hairpins. It's feeling like a, even with that crash, it is still feeling like it's going to be a pretty good run. Ooh, too much oversteer there into the first part. Let's have a look though. Again, back end just letting go just a little bit. However, compared to a lot of its competition, a lot, a lot better. Ooh, actually, I'm gonna. <laughs> the front, the. Yeah, the front is turning in that well. I'm actually clipping the inside of the final four hairpin there. Okay. Uh. Yep, yeah, it's flat out. It is flat out. That is uh, great to see. I think this is probably the first... Well, probably not... Actually, no, it wouldn't be the first two-wheel drive car to do that flat out, but it's the most comfortable uh, two-wheel drive car up there. Got no uh, big oversteer moment out of the 50% hairpin. Let's go at least heading into the uh, second tunnel. It's... Uh, I don't know how this one is comparing, it's probably a little bit slower, um, but I'm hoping that I can claw that time back, yeah, because it just feels there, second gear kind of feels like the wrong gear to be in, but it probably isn't, well it would be if I was, uh, had the options of a centrifugal supercharger and a uh, turbo, because the centrifugal actually delivers a little bit less power at the lower revs, but obviously you know, you get all the power at the higher revs. Uh, and then obviously a turbo. I run turbo lag risks. So, yeah. Ooh, got a little bit too much oversteer there through the uh, right hander, but might be able to do something good. Uh, I think, to be honest, I might just have to, for stability reasons, just keep the car in second. Get on that power more. So, yeah, because I am full throttle out of more of those corners in second than it would be in first. It's just, you know, it's, the car's going to take, I think, a, just that little bit longer, really, to get out of the corner. A little bit of understeer, however, nothing too bad. Heading on to the uh, main back straight now, get a th up the gears through the power, see what it can do. Oh, a little bit of a uh, a little bit of airtime, actually. Tiny uh, two-wheel moment going up that straight. It's going to cost, again, a little bit of speed, a little bit of time. Every sort of... Every single moment matters, even down the straight. So, uh, with this car. Well, with anything, to be honest. But, you know, when you're doing some sort of time trial stuff, you need to get absolutely everything spot on. Yeah, yeah, it's a slower run. 
the first corner really did cost a lot of time with a a 440.700. So yeah, that did a lot. So I've really got one final run with this car. It is very good to drive. Very, very good to drive. But, you know, I've got to try and push this car even more. I've got to be careful with it. Right, let's see. Let's try and get turn one, turn two much better. There we go. That's better through turn one, turn two. Just keep the car relaxed. There we go. Much better this time. Okay. Into the first proper big braking zone. Very close to the wall, actually, but survived. Keep it in second. I want to know what the acceleration is like. I'm on a very, very wide line. That is going to cost time, that. I love understeer, because I'm now really having to push the car a lot more than, well, really, I'm having to push a lot more than I did last one, because, well, this is my final attempt, and I would kind of like to see this beat the O37. It's a lot more stable and things like that. So I reckon, I reckon this can get into the 38, to be honest. If I get a very, very good run. I'm um, running a little bit wide there. Yeah, I'm absolutely pushing the car. A little bit too early on the power through that corner. So I just need to, I just need to relax, keep the car settled. That's where I'm going to get all the speeds. Keeping the car settled, not absolutely launching it trying to find every single moment because I'm going to I'm just going to cost myself time if I'm unsettling the car I'm just going to lose precious seconds right, I am going to have to put it in first but keep the car stable through the four hairpins come on there we go, better through there take a little bit of a wider line this time, see what that's like again the car is still planted and come on, out the final for the four hairpins. There we go. Good. Actually, very nicely done through there. Head up to the uh, river chicane. Again, this was flat out absolutely, absolutely brilliant to drive the Gallardo. Really, really is. Taking a little bit too much speed through there. Oh, again, back end unsettling a little bit. But it's not all that bad. 50% hairpin now. Uh... Oh, back end just stepping out a little bit. That's going to cost time. However, uh, hopefully, that the run is still going to be pretty good. That's It's feeling to be a quicker run that uh, I will be able to make it a faster time. Again, the back end is just letting go. I'm going to have to put it down into first there. The, uh, the car was just understeering a little bit too much. Going to be costing... Gonna be losing a little bit. Run a little bit wide out of there. Slam onto the brakes. I'm gonna put into first. Get it round here. Head up towards the waterfall car park. Put in second. Get round the double left hander. There we go. Stamp onto the power. Come on, mate. Yeah, this is where a little bit of time as well was lost. The front end is starting to lose a little bit of traction there. Just a little bit. That's quite a shame. Come on. Get it through there. A little bit of a late apex that time. However, you know, it's going to just keep the car getting through the corners. So, there is that. Much better this time. Oh, back end slipping out a little bit. But, I don't think... I think there was more slip angle, really, than anything. Uh, probably a little bit too... Probably a little bit uh, too sideways for slip angle, but eh yeah, oh. Right, come on. Let's get you now down the straight for the final time. Keep it on the ground a little bit. Yep, not losing as much time. Oh, I've locked the brakes. I'm pushing too hard. Pushed way too hard there. And uh, I've, locked, I've locked the brakes. That is a big issue there. Come on, Lamborghini. Uh, I don't think it's going to be, it's definitely not going to be TVR pace, it might be it's new, might be in like it's own little ground, however, I don't know, uh, I think so, 
come on. Get in the second. Just keep the foot flat. No, oh, push too much. Oh, there was a slower run. It was a slower run. 439.8. Honestly, I think I pushed the car just a little bit too hard. Just a little bit past its limits on the final run there. Especially around the final corner. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to save moments. And I was just trying to be brave. And yeah, that just costed me too much time. So the first run turned out to be the quickest one. That's annoying. That's a bit of a shame. Uh, I do reckon there's a little bit more time in the guy order. But I'm only allowed three runs. So I can't do anything about it. And so the first drivetrain swapped car, the Gallardo Superleggera, is going to claim third place of the two-wheel drive leaderboard, separating itself from the bottom three by quite a nice margin, sort of uh, hanging around, sort of a second below the uh, all 37. Sorry, uh, I do think I could have gotten a much better time from that Gallardo, probably in the lo much lower 39s. Uh, I don't, I don't think I'd be able to get quite into the 38s, uh, but I, d I do think I pushed the car just a little bit too hard, trying to eke that bit more time out of it, and just overdid the car. And yeah, unfortunately, the first run was just a better run, and yeah. But like I said, I can't do it now. I can't rerun it. I only have three attempts, and that's it. That is that. So the Super Legera is going to be stuck in the third place. <laughs> However, that's going to be it for me. I do hope you enjoyed anyway. If you did, do the stuff the YouTube algorithm likes, apparently. Um, and if you want, the link in the description, join my Discord in case you want to say hello to me. However, that is it from me. And until next time, ciao for now.